Yo, this is a motherfucker who needs no introduction. You are watching Breaking Records Radio. I want to talk about the skateboard thing because I, I find that really interesting. I, I come from a skateboard uh, kind of background as well, a little bit younger than That's you, so. but um, but yeah, I, I would have started skating. I want to say ninety eight or ninety nine or so, and and took mm. it pretty seriously up until the mid two thousands, anyways. Um, and at that period of time, skateboarding and hip hop wasn't it, skateboarding was still very much a kind of a punk rock thing. Um, it was associated yeah. with punk rock, but there was. Definitely. There was some hip hop that was starting to to kind of come into fold there, right? Um, I remember watching that Plan B video, Virtual Reality. I don't know when it came uh, out, but but early on, maybe ninety four, ninety five, or something like that. And it had right. um, it had a casual. Uh, I don't know if it was Fear Itself or um, off of the Fear Itself album, though, anyways. But what I saw was a lot of the West Coast guys, and it kind of makes sense, but your, your Del the Funky Homo Sapien, Souls of Mischief, Hyro, those guys yeah. were really kind of associating themselves with, with skateboarding. Um, I listened to the, the interview that you ended up doing with Drink Champs, and I, I know that you were kind of persecuted a little bit for, for being kind of unorthodox and, and for skating. Yeah. Um, were you aware at that period of time that there was a scene kind of devoted to kind of hip hop and skateboarding uh, on the West Coast? I kind of, like I I mean it's funny because I think at that time all the things I had love for which, which were skateboarding and and BMX like mostly street and vert yeah and you could only get that from the West Coast at that time so like. You know, on the East Coast, we didn't have Ron Wilkerson's, and we didn't have, like, a Caballero, and we didn't have, like, a Tony Hawk. We didn't have any of those personalities on the East, you know what I mean? So my only way of getting any of that would be, you know, to to, to buy Flasher Magazine or... or Skateboard Mag or, yeah, those Right, or Skateboard Mag, and, like, I, I had a to like BMX Plus so that would come to my house like in my mailbox like every month or whatever and that's pretty much how you you know that's how I would get whatever I could get from it and then you know like I was just compelled to try it you know and and I didn't ever at that point at least like I wasn't looking at it like well this is what you know this is what kids from your your background and stuff do and this is what they don't and this is what the East does and this is what they don't Yeah. this is what white kids do and this is what black kids do and I hadn't looked at it like that at all I just looked at it no different from you know loving to draw or, or loving to, to 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 play sports or whatever it just was something that I found an interest in and I, I didn't even know I, it was unorthodox you know, like, for me to be involved in that. I just dug it, and I ran with it. Gotcha. Yeah, those, like, countercultural communities, I, I feel like, are really interesting, especially at that period of time, because things evolve, right? Like, when I started getting into skateboarding and the skateboard kind of culture in that community, um, I mm -hmm. started learning a lot about hip-hop through things like skate videos right um that's how i was right. introduced to a lot of music but at that period right. of time that was that wasn't really the case right because as we said if if you're skating in 1990 91 um hip-hop is just not associated with um not with at all skateboarding not at, that at period all of time, right right not at all like i, I want to say i think that maybe who i do remember i, I remember it was big to me because i remember there used to be a rider named Dennis McCoy, um, and he was a BMX rider for, I, I want to say Team Harrow, but yeah. it was, like, super big to me when he came out and he rode to, like, run DMC. I want to say it was either Walk This Way or King of Rock or one of the two, but he would start implementing that at his competition. And other than him, I couldn't really say that I had seen anybody, like, ride to like hip-hop yeah you know it's crazy I mean? and yeah absolutely and it, crazy it, yeah and but when he did do that it was so major you know i like i think at one point adidas got involved with him or, or something like that just because of that but i looked at him like he was one of the he was one of the vessels that allowed for hip-hop culture and skateboard culture and bmx culture to kind of find their way towards each other yeah, but I it was very, 
it, it was very rare at that time. Like, and it's funny because that actually got me into alternative music because a lot of people at that time were riding to like. Uh, it was pre-Nirvana, so I want to say, you know, you had people riding to Pearl Jam, and you had people riding to all these different groups that we in the hood were not at all familiar with, you know, so, and I had already dug all sorts of music, like, you know, I would listen to Van Halen, and I would listen to Led Zeppelin, and I was listening to, like, you know, U2 and stuff like that, and it's weird, because when I got into skating and BMX, that kind of turned me on to more artists in the alternative world or in the rock world. And it just was just one of those things, bro. Like, I had no idea that all these things one day would collide. I just knew I had an interest in all of them. Yeah, it's really interesting. Like, I study, I study and I, I write a lot on Canadian hip-hop, and one of the things that fascinated me when I started kind of diving into my research heavily was... Um, how involved different skateboard companies were in sponsoring different events and kind of being involved yeah. within the hip hop community, right? You had like uh, brands like Circa, for example, or RDS um, was big, uh, especially on the West Coast, with with putting yeah. real money into uh, to hip hop artists, right? They like, putting money yeah. into the DJs or MCs in order to go overseas and tour or to put out shows mm -hmm. locally. Um, they were so involved in the community, and it really ended up becoming intertwined, like you said, like those those two realities become connected eventually um but yeah they, they exist separate for so long yeah and it's just weird I, I i'm a firm believer bro like in alignment and timing and all of that stuff so i think it was just i, I mean now in retrospect if i look at it all these things were were so rebellious but i think that's the commonality that they all share meaning you know, like, that's the common component. Like, alternative was rebellious. It was all about, you know, going against the system and going against your parents and going against what you're being taught. And then you have hip-hop, and it's this totally rebellious form of music that's about, you know, all the things that go on that you can't see on the news and that you don't hear about in certain parts of the country or in the world. And then you have, you know... And then from there, you have skateboarding and you have BMX. And just in terms of a sport, like, those two, like, it's crazy to me, like, X Games is this gigantically huge thing now that comes on, like, on major networks now. And yeah. back then... And in the Olympics, right? Like, yeah, it's going to be in the Olympics, Olympics next time, crazy, yeah. Right? Yeah, and back then, bro, you were just lucky to get, like, a, a VCR tape with, like, you know... With, with Bucky Lasik or somebody skating. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you, you were just like, you had to take what you could get back then, but it just blows my mind that all these things that represented, you know, not the norm, they somehow all grabbed each other's figurative hands and they're bigger than life now. And that, to me, is awesome, you know? 